Howdy folks, today we are going to be going over mini project 20, which will be writing a to-do list in React. React is a really powerful tool for front-end development, and so I'm pretty excited to be able to use it for this project. Let's get started. So, I am not using Create React app for this, but if you use Create React app, then uh, most of this stuff would be the same because you'd still have the code in source. That wouldn't change. You may notice I have a bunch of files here don't have and if you're using create react app that's totally okay um, I'll just go over these very briefly I do I am using Vite for this not webpack again this shouldn't matter too much for what you're doing if you're using create react app um, all of these steps will be the same the vconfig is pretty simple though and it's pretty fast which is why I like to use it I've got my package JSON which just has the important scripts again if you're using create react app these will all be react scripts but it's very similar concept. My start script, this will essentially start a very simple server that's designed to serve everything in the build directory. That's just because sometimes I push this into Heroku and I wanna have a very, very simple backend that can serve the code. We're gonna be using React GitHub pages for this and use the module for that. So we're not actually gonna be making use of that server, but it's just there because that's just how this builds. Uh, we've got a post install. Post install is something that runs after npm install. So if I run npm install, this post install script runs afterwards, which does the build. Again, very useful for Heroku. Because um, for Heroku, you often want that build step to complete. Then the build, which just runs Vite build. Again, if you're using create react app, this would be something on react scripts. Very similar concept. And then I have dev, which just runs Vite. This is similar to running the Webpack Dev server or Webpack serve. It just starts up a hot reloading server. Very simple dependencies right now because we don't need a lot. We have this plug React plugin for Vite, and then we have prop types React and React DOM. Uh, we have our server. It's an extremely simple backend server. It just pulls in Express, has a port, sets up a static to the build directory which is what happens here. You notice, you might notice that the back end and front end, like my front end is at the top level. Um, that's, it's totally okay if you have your front end nested somewhere else, as long as, <clears throat> you know, as long as you know where that code is. All right, we have our template, which is a very simple template. This just pulls in this starting module to start off. This again, this is a V thing. In Webpack, you would actually indicate where your starting code was so i would actually tell it index.jsx was my start code and this is my template uh, v is set up a little different so that it just hooks into this as a module and that's just how it works uh, but again you don't need to worry about that too much because if you're using create react app it will set all of that up for you so let's look at our index this is where we get into some interesting stuff notice i have these as jsx if you are using Create React App or Webpack, you do not have to have these as JSX. You could have them as simple JS files. Vite requires them to be JSX just because it uh, optimizes the process somewhat. So that's how I'll be handling it here. This is the entry point of the application. This is the first file that loads and it has to pretty much load and do everything else or everything else has to happen in the chain of this file. A very common pattern here, we don't touch this file very much. In React, we define a base level app component, and this is where everything actually exists. And then inside our render here, this is it. And you usually set this up and you almost never look at this file again, and then you do everything else inside of app. That's because this file is, it has some downsides. Um, and it's a little bit easier to just immediately get inside a component and work with that. So we're importing React, we're importing React DOM, um, React is probably not necessary here because V imports it by default for JSX files, but I, it's just a habit of mine to keep importing it. React DOM dot render, you can see it's document dot get element by ID root. That pulls in this ID right here. What that is going to do is that is going to actually take this as the parent container of our application. This can be useful because it allows you to have chunks of your project that are react and chunks of your project that aren't it's not common <clears throat> react definitely does like to be the main application but it can be done um, and it's not super hard to make just chunks of it be react and chunks not 
So that's why we have this particular thing here. This is our first look at JSX. This here, this is not um, JavaScript. This is HTML, basically, or JavaScript Extended, which is what the JSX stands for. This references the app component. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to render our app component into, and the resulting HTML is going to be placed into that document get, el get element by ID root. And that's pretty much index.jsx. Yours will look similar. They almost always look just like this, unless you're dealing with contexts, which we haven't really got to yet. So don't worry about that for now. It should look very similar to this. Now let's take a look at app. This is where the magic happens. So we've got a React, which again, not 100% necessary because it's a JSX file. It's just there. We have our styles. Vite requires styles.module.css if you are using, and that's just because that's how it's set up. If you are using um, your webpack or using create react app you would not necessarily need this i've got this set it up so it's exporting the styles as an object so i can do things like this you don't necessarily need this if you don't have if you're using create react app it's actually kind of hard to set this up so you would actually have it like this and then you would just say as a string um just like we would do in normal html i just happen to set it up this way because i like it this way a little bit better easier to use so this returns a div with this style and then welcome to my to-do list when app is rendered when we say we render the component it basically means this function is called so whatever this function returns becomes the output and in this case it's just a standard div which means react knows how to actually turn that into html if there are other components react would actually render those in turn until everything worked good so let's take a look and see if we can actually run this. So I'm going to go down to my terminal okay, and I'm going to look at my package JSON. I'm going to say, okay, dev. Right? I don't want to build necessarily. If I run build, it's just going to build everything, right? It's just going to build the JS and the CSS. I'm going to say npm run dev. It says, okay, look, we're started up on 8080. So I'm going to pull this over here. And there it is. Welcome to my to-do list. Bring up the inspector, just because, you know, the inspector is really helpful in a lot of cases. And make this a little bit bigger. Go. We've got an error. It says it can't find the fav icon. This is an okay error, usually. The fav icon is what goes up here. Most of our projects don't have a fav icon. Now, this is hot reloading. So I could say, just put a bunch of T's on here, because that's cool. And it's reloaded. V auto rebuilds. And you can see update on it. So let's think about a to-do list. Okay, what does a to-do list look like? Well, we need the ability to add in some lists, some list items, and display list items as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by filling out some basic HTML structure. This is how I go about most front-end pages is... You fill out some kind of dummy structure, and by dummy structure, I mean dead structure that doesn't have any real data, and then you go back and you kind of figure out how to work with it. So let's see. First of all, we want to have the ability to, to add in list items. So let's put that in. I'm going to put a div in here. And you notice, I'm just writing HTML right now. JSX can handle HTML inside the application. Totally fine. These parentheses here are not required. I just like them because it kind of <clears throat> fully gates where it starts and ends, which is nice visual for me to be able to see where my JSX is. The system doesn't actually need them, so you could take them as just for my own edification. So let's see, we've got our div in here. I'm going to put a label, okay, and new item. And then let's put a text box. Text. Um, and then we're going to give this. So I'm going to give this. Oops. You notice it actually put that slash input. Input does not work that way. But let's say I get rid of this and I save. Oh, you can see it's already giving me an error. If I save this, it throws a huge error. It's like, hey, I don't like this. 
And what it's saying is that um, expected corresponding JSX closing tag. Now, you might be wondering, hey, I've written React like, or I've written HTML like this all the time. I've written breakline tags like this, written input tags like this. What What's going on here? Well, the thing is, um, React is not making any assumptions about what kind of tag this is. What it wants is this little slash here. And you may have noticed I've done this in some other examples just because I'm used to it. This slash indicates to everything that this is a self-closing tag. So if you're doing a breakpoint tag, you want to put that slash at the end. That indicates, hey, I'm done here. There's no, you don't need an end tag. HTML, the browser is smart enough to figure out, oh yeah, okay, this doesn't, this has a, it's an input, right? We know inputs don't have children. That wouldn't even make any sense. So we're just not going to bother to look for an end tag. React does not know that because how would it? <clears throat> you know, React is, React is not an HTML parser. It is a component parser. So it doesn't have that kind of smart. So if you leave that out, it works. So if you get that error where it says you missed a closing tag, make sure you put this little backslash at the end of it. Now, if I go back here, okay, new item. It's pretty good. Now you can see it gave you some errors in here. All right, I kind of want a little bit of spacing there. So let's look at styles, inline styles. Okay, if I just want to throw a style on this really quickly, you think it'd be like, oh, okay, let me put some margin right, maybe 10 pixels on it, right? Nope, doesn't work. And you can see it's empty and there's an error here. The style prop, expects a mapping from style properties of values not a string that's because they want an object here so to do an object i'm going to start off with a pair of curly braces what that tells react is that this is now going to be javascript code so i could put anything in here i could put like 10 okay and then it would get very confused because it'd be like i don't know what that is i don't know what 10 is here but you can see it's now JavaScript that's being put in there. So what I want now, and this gets a little confusing, a second set of curly braces. Why is that? Is that because we need two curly braces? No, the second set is an object. So the outermost boundary is actually telling React we're moving into JavaScript mode now. This is all gonna be JavaScript. This is no longer gonna be HTML-like code. The second set is an object. And usually when I do an object, I do something like this just to give me some room. Then I'm going to say margin. Now you notice all over here, this is camel case. Can I say margin right? I cannot because this is JavaScript now. That first set of curly braces moved me into JavaScript mode and margin dash right is not valid in JavaScript. Because the dash, it looks like margin minus right. Two variables subtracting from each other. We can't do that. So instead, I'm going to say margin right. I'll just put a comment in. You don't have to do that, but I like curling commas. The system will automatically know that it needs to convert this into kebab case, which is margin dash right, all lowercase. If you're doing pixels, it also knows that any number should be converted to pixels. That's the important thing to keep in mind. If I want this to be percentages, I have to do it as a string, 10%. But if it's just going to be pixels, you can leave it as a number. And now, let's check this out. It's got margin right 10 pixels. So <clears throat> that's how you can handle that. This can be really powerful because this is JavaScript. It can be conditional. So I could at some point say maybe it should be 20, not 10, and have some code that's computing that very easily. Anyway, now I've got our input, and now let's put a button. Add. Notice I'm not wrapping this in the form. And <clears throat> we could wrap in the form. Um, I'm just not going to do that for now because I want people to have to click the button. Not doing anything. I type, add. Okay, so let's actually make it do something. When I click this button, okay, so now I'm going to add an event listener to the button. What that? What is that going to be? Well, I want to handle a click event, right? So normally I would say something in the JavaScript like document dot get element by ID some ID dot add event listener click. Well, this button doesn't have an ID, and in fact, I shouldn't be adding the event listener this way. That's a very, that's an anti-pattern in React. It's a thing you don't want to do because it can cause problems. What I want to do instead is I want to add it directly onto the element here. 
Now, there is actually a way to do this in HTML. It's just we don't use it because it's actually kind of crappy in normal HTML. In React, though, it's very powerful. So what I'm going to say is on click. And you can see there's a couple others in here. This says add an event handler for the click event. That's what that on click means. There's also a couple others on key press, on type, all the events that you're used to on submit. You can add them this way. And React will handle adding them. Equals. Now what's going to equal? Well, let's go into JavaScript again. So I'm telling it, let's go into JavaScript and putting the curly braces. Now I'm going to declare a function. And I'm going to declare an anonymous function. Just like if we were doing add event listener, we pass an anonymous function in as a second parameter. And I'm just going to say, okay, here we go. Let's actually just console log. Why do I do this? Because I want to make sure it worked. Every little change you make like this, you should test it. Okay, so now I go to my console here. Click this. Clicked. You can see it shows up there. Great. That's cool. So how do we get this? Do we do like an on change event? Equals blah. We do. We absolutely do. So let's, let's hook that up. So I want to hold on to the event. And then let's uh, console log event.target.value same idea right i come in here i start typing hey look at that as i type grocery store it updates just like it should right and this is what we would expect if we added an on change event to the input just like normal so this is how react does its events <clears throat> of course we can do more than console log with that we now have our value so let's say uh new item and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay if new item equals blank return <clears throat> we're just not dealing with it we're not dealing with the new item so cool how do we store this right I want um I want to store this data somewhere well I could just put a value up here let items equals blah or you know current item equals blah and then i can come down here and say okay you know um actually this belongs somewhere else i'm just gonna do that um current item equals new item and then down here i could say click current item okay so let's go here i type some stuff i add there it is it works this is very much the wrong way to do it do not do this the reason is when I change this value, there's nothing causing this code to re-render. And as we'll, as we'll see, making the component re-render when, when you do changes is very, very important. So instead, what we want to do is we actually want to use useState. Why useState? <clears throat> because useState gives us a special function for updating values. And when we update the function, it re-renders. And I'll show you what that does. Oh, I'm going to put something in this function, render. Okay, now I reload this page, it says render. I type a bunch of stuff, no render. It's only rendered once. React is all about that render cycle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a state. Now state, I could say current item equals use state, and you give it the default value of that state, the starting value. Okay, so I'm gonna take my current item out here. Now here's the problem. This actually doesn't return a single value. It returns an array. So if I console log that, oh yeah, it broke here. It's like, no, I don't like this. All right. If I console log that, restart it, I mean, it, oh, current item, I spelled it with one R, didn't I? Yes, I did. There we go. So you can see it returns two out items here. One is that string. Right, that, that initial string that we pass in the other is a function. So what this actually is, and we're gonna use destructuring for this, this is the actual value, and then this is a set function. So this particular format here is very common for use state. You destructure your array into the value and the set function, because that's what it returns. You might be wondering why is it not an object? 
well it doesn't know what you wanted to call this value use state has no idea what this value actually is it just knows it's a empty string and doesn't care after that now it's just that empty string so how do we use this then well let's pop that in here and we're going to say set current item as a function and now actually let me put that render in there because i should have gotten rid of that render I didn't remember before this only rendered once so now i come in here it renders multiple times the component continuously renders why does that matter well let's go back to our previous example okay and let's say i wanted to actually also be rendering this current item remember we're going to javascript mode current item Let's just say current text is current item. Okay, current text is as I type, well, set current item, not that. Okay. As I type, it doesn't update. I'd like it to. How would I get to update? I could go into the span and modify it directly, but that's not how React works. Let me show you what's happening if I use the state. Okay, so I put my state back in here. Now I'm updating current item, and I'm still using the current item here. As I type, this happens. Why does that happen? Because every time I type, it calls set current item. Set current item comes up here and modifies the state. Modifying the state triggers the entire component to re-render. When the component re-renders, it re-renders this chunk here and gets the new value. This can have some problems in React occasionally if you have a like an old value stuck somewhere, but there are a lot of ways around that. Just keep in mind whenever you want to store data, you do not store it out of your components. Ever. You almost always store it inside a state or in a context. Okay, so now we have our current item. When we click our button, we want to add that to a list. How are we going to do a list? We're going to do it the same way. Item list, set item list equals use state. Okay, then when we click our button, I want to say, okay, set item list. I'm actually going to spread the current item list and then my current item. Because this is a list, I'm just this is basically just a cheap way of appending. The other thing about React and State is you almost never want to modify this item. Sometimes you do. But you don't want to ever set it directly because that won't actually change anything. You have to call the set in order for the application to re-render. Remember, the re-render cycle is very important. So, set item list. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here. We're going to do another div. I want to loop over these items. So first of all, I'm just going to print them out. JSON.stringify item list. Right now, empty array. Let's say item one. Add, oh look, it went in there. Item two or three in there as well okay so i would like to loop over these well the way that we loop i could actually do something like this i could say um item entries equals array for item of item list so standard for loop item entries oops, push div because again this is a jsx file i can put html anywhere it doesn't have to be in the return statement i can absolutely just put it here item again inside here i'm jsx mode and then i switch to javascript to get that item in there then i could actually just come down here and say all right let's do the um what did i call it? item entries let's just put that in here jsx is fine with this this is a list of jsx it knows how to handle that it's a list of components I come back here, okay, item one, item two, add a couple more. You can see it goes in there, totally fine. It knows how to turn that into that list of divs. I think that's pretty cool. I'm actually gonna get rid of this here. Also this current text. 
another reason you can see why we want that set item list. Every time I, add, I change the item list, I want this to be re-rendered because I'm adding new entries. The only way to re-render that is to rerun this function. <coughs> so, now I'm pushing this in here. Cool, I could say like, you know, maybe I want a standard for loop in here. I want to say, okay, you know, let i equal zero. Stop length plus and i say okay you know i want first plus one colon item entries i well then if i come in here oops oh it broke something about that broke <clears throat> let's see so the reason nothing's showing up is because i'm looping over item entries which is this one which is just declared as entry i wanted to item list list okay there we go. One thing you'll notice about this is that it's actually reloading and keeping the same data, which is kind of a nifty trick. This may not work for you. Um, if it doesn't work, you might need to... Um, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't work. Sometimes it reloads the whole page. So yeah, now I've got that in there as well. You can get as complicated as you want with this. The problem is, this is kind of out of joint, right? Item entries is down here. I've got it up here. This doesn't look very nice. Especially, let's say I have a ton of these. Bunch of different loops that I've got. Maybe I've got loops inside of loops. That's going to be really nasty to have to keep track of. And this is all about making things easier to keep track of. So what I want to do then, is I want to come down here and actually do it inside the JSX. Well, how do we do that? So, we've got a list of items. And we need to build another array that gets returned as the result, but we need to loop over that. Just so happens there's actually a function that can do that. Item list.map. Okay. So notice the callback function takes the value and the index. Which is great. Item index. Okay. This actually works the same way as that for loop. The reason is, <clears throat> whatever I return out of this map, remember, it builds up an array of those elements and then returns that full array. So basically it's returning that array into the div here where it gets rendered. So I can return another same idea, index plus one or item. Save that. And now you can see it doubles it. Doubles it is basically doing the same thing. Here's the previous loop that was generated by, or previous data generated by the for each. Here's the one generated by the map. This is the more common structure. We don't generally do <clears throat> this one because this is in line in the code where I have the div is where this shows up. So like you can see very quickly at a glance where this is going to show up in the code. Now <clears throat> we did a loop. If you do a loop generally, you almost always get this warning. Each child in the list should have a unique key property. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well, React tries to be optimized when it re-renders things. So what it wants to do is, let's say I change the sixth element here. It wants to only re-render that sixth element. It would like to only have to change that. If I move it to the top here or I move it to the bottom, it would like to just be able to pick up that existing rendered child and move it elsewhere in the list because HTML can do that. It's not too hard. You just reappend the child or reinsert it and the system will move it. It's a very cheap operation. It doesn't actually re-render the entire list if nothing changed. So if I go here and type some stuff, this is causing a re-render because we're using the use state. But these aren't being re-rendered because nothing changed on them. The issue is when you get to a list, let's say I take item 6 and I move it to below item 10. How's React supposed to know that? How does it know that that element is the one that moved? It doesn't. And so if it doesn't know, it actually just re-renders the entire list, which we don't want it to do. It's kind of expensive. If I put a key on it, though, React knows immediately. It says, oh, that key moved. It can look up. It's kind of like putting an ID, right? Except React doesn't assume the ID is unique because it's actually pretty easy to create a non-unique ID. So React has a key property. And what I'm going to do here, you're not supposed to use the index technically, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say item index. 
and this will just give a unique key. Using the index, it's okay, it's just a bad practice because the index is not always, like, like if I sorted this array sort of thing, like, the index would change. Now I reload, well, I reload and it goes away, you can see that error is no longer there. Because each of these has a key, if I inspect them, that key is not there because React doesn't actually send the key to the DOM. It keeps the key internally so it knows how to change. So if you run into that error, just make sure you put a key on here, on anything that you're getting in the map, like where you're having a multiple of them. Okay, so now I can add an item, right? So when I add that item though, normally when you add an item, let's say I'm like, uh, let's just reload this. Serial, okay, and I want to go back to eggs. It'd be nice if this reverted itself, right? So I have to delete everything and say eggs. It'd be nice if it just blanked itself out because that's not an uncommon thing for forms to do. When you've successfully submitted the form, they reset. Well, how do I do that? I do that with a value. So inside my input, I can say value equals item. Now this, the on change and the value have moved this into a controlled text field. If I don't have either of these, so just like this, React doesn't care about it. You're typing into it, and that just does nothing. It's it's completely disconnected from everything. React doesn't care. No, this is not updating that form. If I just say value equals current item, React will actually give me a warning on this. A component is changing an uncontrolled input to be controlled. It's most likely caused by the value change from undefined to a defined value, which should not happen. Decide between using a controlled or uncontrolled input for the lifetime of the component. If you see this, what it means is you put the value here, but now let me start typing. I'm typing right now and nothing's happening. The reason is, whenever I type, React has forced the value of this to be a specific value, and it will not allow the browser to change it. It is a controlled value, and that's why you need both the value and the on change event. If you have the on change event, it means as you type, that data shows up there. So if I type, let me actually show you here. So now I go in here, I type. You can see those keys are showing up. The, the component is getting that value, but then it's automatically being reset because this value is what controls it. So unless I set that value and update the state and re-render the input, it won't update. So this is the things that you need if you're controlling a text input, is you need the value and you need the on change event that's updating that value. If you don't have those two things, it's not gonna work right. So it's just something to keep in mind. But now that I'm controlling that, as soon as I set the list item, I can also set the current item to blank. That's why we want that. That's why I want this current item to be the source of truth. So I can come in here. Okay. Put it. Eggs. And now it blanks out. Because I've blanked out the data that it's holding onto. This is kind of the React way. Rather than modifying the component directly, I'm going to modify the data that it's that's backing it. That's controlling it. And when I do that, that automatically makes it work. It makes it update. I could do other things with that. I could just set it to something law, right? So I put eggs in here. It gets set to gibberish, but that's not very helpful. Okay, so got our item list. Um, maybe I want something a little more complicated here. I'd actually like the ability to um, to remove an item, right? Like I, I would like to delete it. Like maybe I finished it. Okay, so what we're gonna do. This is the actual item text. So I want to put a pop a span around that. And then I'm going to add a button. Move. Cool. Remove some eggs. Let's do some cheese. So I want to remove one of these. Well, it's not doing anything right now. What do we do? On click, again, I use the 
curly braces to indicate I'm going to JavaScript mode, and then I do a function. Here, this is just like we're adding an event listener. It's the function that will be called when the button is clicked. You see, it's much simpler to do this sort of thing in React than it is in vanilla JS. When this happens, what do I want to do? I kind of want to remove this item, the current item at this index. I have access to this index because the index and the item actually are part of the closure of this map, which means they're part of the closure of onClick. So I have access to all these fields. So I can say, okay, well, let's get rid of that index. I could say item list dot splice index one. But that doesn't do anything. Now, if I re-render, now it goes away. What happened? Well, when I clicked that remove button, it actually got removed. It's just the system didn't update until I did something else to cause it to update. Why didn't it update? Because I'm not calling set item list. Well, can I call set item list on item list? What about that? Let's add some cheese. No, it doesn't work because JavaScript does not check the list deeply because that would be expensive. What it does is it's checking to see, is this the same variable that I already worked with? And it is, of course, because I haven't changed it. Instead, we have to do something like this. But for deleting, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy it. Item list copy equals, and then we're going to spread item list, which is one of the easiest ways to copy the list. Now I'm going to splice the copy and set the copy into set item list. What will that do? Well, this is a brand new object. If I pass this in the set item list, React is going to take a look and it's going to say, oh, that's different from what I have right now. Let me update. If I just passed item list in here, it doesn't matter what I did to it. It's still the same variable. It's still the same object. <laughs> and so I have to make a new object. This is just a weird thing that React does because it needs to, it doesn't know any other way of quickly checking that we've actually changed something. So now I make a copy, I splice, I set that to the copy. Again, this is a very common pattern for updating a list. Just like we did here, we technically made a copy of the list by spreading into a new array and adding a new one. We go here, add our cheese, remove our cheese, and there it goes, it disappears. Make this a little bit bigger. All right, so <clears throat> now, We've got something that lets us type in data. We've got our item list. And we've got this map for it. And we can remove it. Okay. <clears throat> so. Let's add a priority instead. Or in addition. Okay. So I want to add a select. Uh, let's say okay. Option value equals high. Priority. And let's add a couple others. Medium. And low. Low priority. This is starting to look bad. I kind of want these to, to be arranged a little differently. I would like these on one line, this on the next line, the add on the other line. So I'm actually going to put... This is, you might see, this is why we use divs all the time. It's because in React, it's just really easy to use divs everywhere. Um, so that's a div. That's going to make some of it work. But what I really want is I want these to be um, kind of a flex box, but make them arrange top to bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to declare a class. So we're going to go in here. And I'm going to say, okay, <laughs> rolls holder. I tend to do camel case for my CSS, and I'll show you why. If this is controls folder, I'll select it. If I double click, it selects controls, and I have to triple click, but that also selects the dot. If I do camel case, a double click will select the entire class, and then I can just copy it, which is just helpful. So I'm gonna make this display flex, flex direction. Now, <clears throat> if you're working without these styles, you would just go in here and you'd say class name 
duplicables and then paste in there. Because I'm working with a styles object, I'm gonna paste in like that. And that's just how I have this set up. Okay, ooh, look at that. That actually looks pretty good for um, like when it gets small, right? But once it gets large, like once it gets past maybe, I feel like 400 pixels, that kind of starts looking bad, right? So let's do this. Let's go in here and let's make a, um, what do I say? If I say max width under pixels, but now it goes off to the side there. <laughs> I kind of want it to be centered. If you want to center something like that, you actually have to put it inside another div. But now this is starting to get kind of long, isn't it? <laughs> getting to the point where I might actually want to have a, uh, a component just for these controls because the controls themselves are actually getting kind of large. So let's do that. We're going to make a directory components. Why make a directory for it? It's just, just for organizational purposes. It just makes it a little bit easier. To get so inside here, I'm going to say controls.jsx. You might wonder, does it need to be capitals? Technically not. But it makes it a lot easier if it's in capitals because this makes it clear that like this is that thing. So I'm going to do when we have a function in React, we have to export it. That's so that other things can use it. So I'm going to export default function controls just like that. And now I'm just going to kind of grab this entire section here. And pop it in the controls. Return. Again, the parenthesis is not required. I just like to put it in there. And then we're going to import it. We're going to say, okay, import control from uh, component controls. This capitalization is important. If I put something in here that's lowercase controls like that, this system is going to think, let's see if I can find it, <laughs> that it's an HTML tag. That is how React determines. Lowercase is HTML tag, uppercase is a function. So what I want to do is I want to say, okay, controls. Why do I put the slash on it? Because this doesn't take children in. It doesn't take them at all because I don't need them right now. Okay, so now I reload that. Ooh, we've got some errors. Styles is not defined, controls JSX. That's because the styles isn't in there. So let's actually pull this in. And I have to put a dot because this is one directory below where the styles actually are. Okay, current item is not defined. Oh, that's true. This makes use of current item. Okay, so what I need to do then is I need to actually take this whole thing and move it in there as well. This is okay in this case because app.jsx doesn't actually make use of current item anymore. Like you could see, both of these were dull. This is very helpful when you're moving stuff like this because then I can determine out. Oh, not in there. Now it says use state is not defined. Well, you notice I hadn't imported React here because in the Vite with JSX, I don't need it. But when I'm going to use state, that does come from React. So I actually need to pull that in. Okay, that shows up now. Let's try some typing. Click add. Oops. Set item list not defined. Ah, now that's because right here. Here's the thing. Set item list doesn't belong to controls. It actually belongs to app. I need this to stay up here because it's being used. And in reality, the controls actually doesn't care about the item list. It just cares about being able to add an element to the item list. So what I could do in here is I could actually pass in item list and set item list as props. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new prop and I'm going to call it on add item. You might notice I'm borrowing that same on click thing. This is an event now. React doesn't do anything special with this. It's just a good way of indicating to ourselves that this is an event that could happen on add item. And I'm going to say, okay, new item. Okay, now what did we do? We added a new item. Well, let's take a look at our controls here. 
we set the item list and we added that on there. So I'm gonna copy that. And I'm just gonna pop that in here and say, okay, new item. Now what I've done is I've basically taken this add item and this is now the event handler. Controls no longer has to care about item list. It doesn't need to know item list exists. All it knows is that, hey, when an item is added, do this thing. This is also a fairly common pattern where instead of passing all the props through, you can also pass props through and sometimes that's done as well, but you could also do something like this where controls now is agnostic from where it's being called. I could call it somewhere else as well and it would just know how to add a new item and it doesn't care what's happening to it. Now, of course, in here, I'm not going to be setting item list. Instead, I'm taking in a prop. Now, props are an object that's on here and it just contains, well, I'll show you. Log props. It contains on add item because that's what it was called with and then that's a function. So what we usually do in this case, is we destructure the object on add item. Just because it's easier to get at. So now on add item, this is the function that's been passed in from app. It's this function. I want to call that function when an item gets added. So instead of set item list, which remember is what's actually using these two methods, which we no longer have access to, I'm going to call on add item item. This is separation of concerns. Controls doesn't need to care what's happening to the item once it's been added. Its only responsibility is adding that item. And then it just lets its parent deal with it. So now if I come in here, say, and there it is. Remove is entirely outside of the element of controls. It doesn't care at all. So this body just cares about creating a new item. Okay, now how about the priority? Let's make that work. Well, again, we need to actually hook up a control to it. Just like we did here. We need a value. So I'm going to create a value. Const, um, this is going to be current priority. I've also seen people use temp for these. These are basically just temporary variables that hold data so we can use them in the rest of the program. Um, like for variables, and they don't often persist past their component. Set current priority. Note also, you don't have to call this set and then the name of this variable. It's just a good convention to make it clear what's actually being set. I could call this set blah, but then how am I going to remember what blah is? If you do this, and you remember, this is for the current priority variable. And I'm going to set this to high. Now come down here. Value equals priority. Again, we use the curly braces to indicate we're going to JavaScript mode. Now I come here, reload. Oh, look. You provided the value prop to a form field without an on change handler. This will render a read only field. Okay. And what does that mean? It means I can't change it anymore. Because, like with this, the fact that the on change isn't there, every time I change, the value just keeps getting reset. So I want to add an on change event. And this is going to look very similar to the top. Set current priority event.target.value and that's just going to update whenever it changes it's going to update this value remember these two <clears throat> these two go hand in hand value and on change so now i have a state property that whenever it changes it'll re-render the page and also keeps track of whatever the current state is so that i can do things in here like so now i can modify it and it's being saved that's important if you've got anything that you need the data you want to hold on to it. So, let's take a look at that. Actually, let's, um, I realize the reason I want to do these controls is because now I actually just want to put those in another div. And, oops. the reason I want to put them in a div is this, I want to center them. So I'm actually going to put a style object in here. Display, flex, uh, justify content center. And now it's in the center of the page. So it's only going to be 400, but also centered nicely as I get bigger. Which is, you know, just looks good. These don't look good. Maybe I should do that on the whole body. But 
we'll see. So yeah, that's why I wanted the controls to be in here because you can see it's a lot easier to manipulate this tiny block of text than it is to manipulate this whole thing as it grows. Also, it's kind of nice to split stuff out into components <clears throat> just so that your other components are cleaner. It's not any more expensive for React to handle. I mean, it's, it's like a couple milliseconds over time, like microseconds more expensive, but it's not going to be a big deal. Don't feel, don't feel afraid to throw things into components. So the reason we added this priority is who wanted to put it on the object. So now this needs to actually become an object. So I'm going to say text current item priority priority. Now we're passing an object name. So if I go in here and I say blah, well now the whole thing explodes. Oh no. Objects are not valid as React children. Found object with keys text priority. This often will give you a very unhelpful stack trace here. Span div 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 app. Yeah, not very helpful. I know, because I just changed it, that this is this <clears throat> div, this div, this span. Because here's item. Right? Item is now an object. So if you get this error, sometimes you have to do a little bit of sleuthing. So this is why, again, test early, test often, because if you've forgotten what you did, then it can be a little confusing. So now I'm actually going to say item.text, and I'm going to put a parenthesis. Again, go back into curly braces, item.priority. I don't need to add the parenthesis. This is actually just text, <clears throat> but it's, you know, it'll look better if I do. So now, reload this. Now we have, hi, it shows in there. The reason this cursor is showing up this way is because I'm in mobile mode, by the way. What if I wanted to do something special, like change the color for high priority items? So maybe I have, um, cheese is a medium priority. Okay, and I have, blah, which is a low priority, and I want them to be different colors. What I can do here is I can actually set up, so I'm doing multiple properties, I'm going to do something like this just to make it a little bit more readable. Style. Remember that first curly brace is to indicate we're going into JavaScript mode. The second curly brace is for an object. And I can say color. Well, what I want to do is a color. I could say um, item. Dot, I could use a trinary here. Um, or I could actually say, um, let's just put this, color, oops, let color equals black, if item.priority equals i, equals red, and then I could just put the color in here, just using the CSS property. Now, this one's high, medium, low. This is one of the powers of having an object, a JavaScript object, being the style we can change it very quickly like this i can do lots of stuff like this um you can put a lot of trinaries show up in here um and so let's see else if item up priority equals medium color equals maybe like do an orange it's a nice orange color let's look I'm gonna solve the caption. Tomato. Let's go. I'll just copy this. Tomato's a nice color. I like tomatoes. Alright. And then maybe we leave the um we just leave the low alone. Oh you know what? Med, it's med, not medium. That's why. So let's add the new medium priority. And tomato is high. Tomato's very important. And then we have uh, red, which, you know, we already have some red, so we don't have to worry about that. All right. Maybe we also want to do something special for the high. Maybe we want to have, like, exclamation marks around it, right? So in here, maybe I want, want some exclamations. How would I do that? Well, I could use a... So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make these separate spans, because otherwise it's going to get super really hard to read. So let's pop this down here. What I would do is I could say, okay, if item.text, you know, is high, maybe I want an exclamation. So I could say exclaim equals blank. Okay, and then if it's high, exclaim equals this. And I'm gonna put exclaim in here. 
Okay, that'll work. It's like tomato. I don't know if that's actually how you spell tomato. Exclamation mark. It's important. We need it there. But then this is another variable I have to declare up here. I have to have down here. And this isn't really the way we do things in React. What we do instead is we would say item.priority equals high and exclamation mark. Same result. Why do we do this? Well, the way ands and ors work in JavaScript, if it's an and, it always, the return value is always the last item. That just is kind of a quirk about how it works. Normally it's used for true false, right? If this is false, we never continue. We just return false and then React ignores it. But if this is true, we go on to the next term, which is a string, which is truthy. And so JavaScript just returns that string and that's what React renders. This can be used for components too. So I could say span like that. Totally fine. If I look in here, there's a maximum mark span. So this is how we do conditionals in JavaScript. We have a, uh, okay, if something and this. Don't usually use the or because that's a little less useful for this particular case. But if you're looking to render something conditionally, only if some case is true, this is how you would go about it. So there we have this ability. We can remove these. And you notice when we remove it, this index changes, which again, that key is changing. So that's why indexes aren't super good as a key because it just kind of gets a little messed up. But yeah, there we have it. We've gone through here. We've made a component. Normally, I would also make a component for the item as well. I would just toss all this in here because it's getting kind of long. Um, actually, let's just do that. We're going to copy all this. We're going to make a new component and let's say item.jsx export default function item. And then we'll just paste all that in. Okay. Well, actually, this stuff. We already got a return, so I'm just going to take the return out since that was already in there. Okay, now what do we need? We need item and index. So that's going to be our props, item and index. Now if we come back here and we're replacing this, we're going to instead just be returning item, so item, index, index. Okay, that seems to work. But now the remove doesn't work because item list is not defined. Well, we're gonna have to do something very similar as before. We had all this code in here. Now instead, we're just gonna say um, on remove. Okay, we're gonna set that up. I'm gonna cut all this on remove. We're just gonna call on remove. Just like the controls, we're just letting the parent know Something happened. Do you want to deal with it? And the parent's probably going to be like, yeah, I want to deal with this. I want to handle the remove. So then we come down here. Move equals. We don't actually need to know what was removed at this point because we already have the index available here. So this, again, is kind of almost like poking holes in the system. So this one has, it knows, it knows when the thing happened, but this knows what to do. So now if I come in here, our remove works perfectly. Add, remove. So this is a very common way of handling React. And once we get into React router, stuff like that, we'll be turning these into views, but it's pretty common to have just a couple components. Like you see controls, item. Notice I didn't put the item list in the component, I just did item. You may actually have a specific item list component that just knows how to list the item. And so we can get, components can be very small. We may even have a component that just does nothing but wrap something in a centered flex. And you just call it like the centered component and you throw it in places. It's entirely up to you how you want to build it. But yeah, anyway. Um, so we went over how you actually get that set up, building the individual system, We've got our controls here that uses our states, temporary states, to hold on to various items or various pieces of data. Then when we click, we pass that data up through a child property 
into our parent so that it can add onto the list. Then when we're rendering our items, we're just using the item class, which has the item index and an on remove function, which handles removing. Hope this is helpful, and I'll see you all next time.